Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we're going to have a brief look at Linux Lite 4.6. We're going to highlight some of the new changes and features to this edition. And if you are unaware of what Linux Lite is, this is one of those best desktops and uh, distributions rather that you should be using for a low end computer. So uh, this is based on Ubuntu, and it is based on the Ubuntu 1804, which unfortunately means there is no 32-bit support, uh, but it does work with as little RAM as 768 megabytes. So you can use it with very low spec systems. We have uh, XFCE is the desktop environment that is built into this. And so if you do have a lower end computer, maybe like my netbook that I use for writing out and about is a Lenovo S21e that has two gigs of RAM and I think just a, a very low grade uh, dual core processor. That would, uh, Linux Lite is an excellent choice for that. I of course personally use Peppermint, which is very close to this distribution. But if you are looking for one, this is one of the better ones. They have some excellent tools in there that are very specific to the distro itself. So it's not just, hey, Ubuntu with a light theme. They've actually put a lot of great things into this as well. So let's go ahead and have a quick look at the release notes. And then we will dive into the distribution itself and have a look. So as far as the actual changes, we have a easy selector for a light or a dark theme. So if you want to select either light or dark without having to go through and change all of the uh, color settings inside of XFCE, you now have that option. They have not added it directly to the welcome screen, but I'll show you how you can access it pretty easily. We also have information for keyboards because this is a deal sometimes with the number locks. I know I'm actually personally fighting this with my peppermint uh, banking computer, the number lock does not stay on and I'm not sure why. So I just haven't had the, the desire to spend the time looking into it. I just <laughs> habit of turning on the number lock, but this will give you some number lock options to give you a try, including some of the individual brand names. We'll see that more closely. And they do have some extra documentation added, particularly of interest to a lot of people. I get a lot of questions about USB persistence. So they have an entire tutorial now about how to make a persistent USB key with this distribution. So if that's something that you're looking for, this distribution might be for you because of this information inside of the, uh, inside of the distro. They have the basic details. Uh, it ships with kernel 4.15, but you can go all the way back to 3.13 up to 5.2, whichever of those you would like to do. And uh, as far as upgrading, if you are already on, a, uh, on an actual release of 4, then you can go into your light upgrade settings and there is an upgrade. If you are running the beta, they say here they do not have a upgrade path. And if you're running an older version 2 or Series 3, there is no upgrade path up to Series 4. So if you're running one of those older ones and you want this, just make a backup of your home directory, make sure all your files are saved, wipe your system, reinstall this, and then drop your home directory back in there. So that being said, let's go ahead and uh, dive on into the distribution itself, shall we? Okay, so here we are on the desktop itself. So we have a very nice, clean system here. And uh, it's, uh, if you're used to Windows, it's going to be very familiar to you. We have these simple launchers. Uh, we have our, HUD, our uh, Minimize All Windows. We have Firefox. We have um, your file manager, which uh, this is XFCE, so I believe it should be Thunar. Let's go ahead and have a quick look. Yep, we are Thunar 1.6.15. Not a bad file manager, actually. It's definitely, it's it's uh, very highly functional and, and lightweight. I like that file manager. We have a terminal down here as well. We open up with the Linux Lite welcome screen. And this is really, especially if you are a new user to this, you're going to want to walk through these steps. These blue items here are what you want to do. Of course, install language support if you need other languages. That's pretty self-explanatory. Setting a restore point. This is something that is fairly new to the Linux distributions as far as being built into the welcome screens and things like this. What this is going to do is it's going to give you a sign of like a, a Windows restore point where it saves all of the settings of the, the operating system but does not include all of your files. It does that through an application that is called Time Shift. So we can see Time Shift right here in the menu. 
Uh, drivers are if you are having some issues with hardware or you have some specialized drivers, the driver utility. What this is going to do is uh, it's going to give you the option to install your various drivers. And um, what I want to show you here, though, is that one of the downsides that I don't like the welcome screen as much as I like some other ones, just because you notice I hit install drivers and it just basically boots up a second page with an, an, an anchor reference to a separate page. But again, all of the new features are not built into this. So if you read or hear that, hey, this has light theme, dark theme, just from the welcome screen, you look at this and you go, there's no light theme, dark theme. Well, you have to click into these guys here. And then again, this is just a separate page with a bunch of anchors. So here is installing your updates, installing your drivers, you're setting a restore point, your languages. And then after that, we have our lighter dark theme. I would like it better if they put that directly on the welcome screen, but there's where it is. So you can select the light theme or the dark theme. Just click the button and it should change that for you. Let's see, did it change anything for me? Yep, so it changed it for me. There's the dark theme and there's your light theme. So you can choose whether you want your light theme or your dark theme right out of the box right there. Here's that keyboard number information, checking your BIOS, uh, UEFI connections, and then you can also check your uh, keyboard settings, so there's for Acer, Sony's, Gateways, HP's, Dell's, um, Lenovo, Asus, so there's all those. Now if you are upgrading, like uh, if you for example are on 4.4, 4 point whatever, you can uh, just click this button here, of course since I've just installed this, then it will just tell me that I'm already on the latest. Now, one of the great things that this has is we have a variety of different software installers. So the light software installer is excellent for new users because this will give you the ability to just simply choose a few key applications that are the most common without having an entire software installer. So here we can remove software or install software. So we'll push install. And it tells you here the various types of things we, we have available. Again, this is not every application available in Linux, but these are by far some of the most popular ones. So if you play games, you can install this. I love the fact that they have this as an easy pack to install, but it's not installed by default because, man, I'm not a huge gamer. And the last thing I really want is to install a new operating system that just have all these games on there. It feels like bloat to me. If you have an iOS device, here's our iOS device manager, Kodi, Instant Messenger. So there's a variety of different tools in here. So if you are looking for any major common application, you can go ahead and install them directly out of this. All right, so we'll go ahead and quit this guy here. Here's, of course, your hardware recommendations, 1 gigahertz processor, 768 megabytes of RAM, 8 gigs of hard drive space, 1024 by 768, and either a DVD drive or USB ports for the ISO image, and then there's some preferred requirements there as well. So with that, let's go ahead and have a look at what the rest of this has, uh, in case you're new. So, of course, um, if uh, you wanted to install more programs. We have uh, Synaptic on here. So Synaptic, of course, is um, this is a tool where you can install literally everything, including these little packages that you're like, I have no idea what that is, you know, but it might be needed for something that you're that you're doing. So if you want LibreOffice, you know, you can type this in and it should filter out. Oh, of course, I spelled it wrong. Let me spell it right this time. So it should filter things out and just give us everything related to that. So, of course, we want to come in here, just make sure LibreOffice uh, is installed. There is some things in there already. Um, I'm pretty sure we do not. Oh, we do. We do have some LibreOffice. Now, you can see here that the meta package is not installed. That's because this only installs by default, like most distributions. It only installs the most used applications, the spreadsheets, the presentation, and the... Uh, writer documents. There's also writing tools. There's full databasing, all those types of things as well that you could install. So uh, with that, let's go ahead and have a quick look at the various options, what's installed. We have GIMP, which is version 2.10, scanning utility. We have Firefox, Thunderbird, 
uh, VLC for media. So you can see it is a very light system. There's not a lot of things installed over here. We also though, we, we do have the Linux Lite software installer and we have Synaptic. We don't have more of an Intermedia like a GNOME software store or a Mint software store which are a, a little bit easier in terms of searchability and having more applications available. But at the same time, you know, we probably don't need that. You're either a, a beginner in which what they have is here or you're advanced in which case you're just gonna use the terminal or synaptic so that is your options there of course inside of your system configurations we have all of these different options here uh, of course let's see what our task manager looks like so we're only using about nine percent of our memory which is set right now to six gigs Let me close this guy out and see what else we have in here. Of course, we have all of our system settings is right there on the menu, just a little system gear. And then uh, we can lock the screen, uh, log out. Uh, the log out, of course, has your uh, power off. And then up here inside of this panel, this is why I like the XFCE desktop is it has a, enough configuration that you can find stuff, but it's not an overwhelming amount. You know, you can adjust your panel, which is the thing at the bottom here with all your tools on it. You can move that anywhere on the computer that you want with workspaces. And then there's different themes. So if you want to do something other than the simple light theme, dark theme, you can go and select from these different types of themes, change around icons, fonts, other settings like that. So there's enough settings in here, but there's not too many that you get uh, that you get um, lost in. Now you'll see a bunch of these that are called light. These are all tools that are specific to this distribution. So if you're running XFCE on another distribution, you're not going to see these guys called light. But what these do is these are very simple tools to do stuff like, in this case, enable auto login. Usually you might have to go into your user manager and select auto login or not. Um, but you can actually choose that. Here's your light desktop. So these are your desktop icons. Do you want to enable or disable? So um, I don't generally use a control panel on there. Uh, so it is a little clunky, you can see. I'd have to find the control panel, disable, push OK, that gets rid of it. Uh, we'll also find the, let's see, the help manual. Let's see if I can find the help manual. I might just need to delete the help manual. So I do like the, I don't like the, uh, this PC, so we're gonna disable that one just because that gets us into the root files. I do like my user files, which is my home directory. I like this one, the network the recycling bin. I don't like the this PC. And this is just a, uh, that's just something we can delete. So there's what we have there. Um, okay, well there's light information, network shares. This is the light software center. So this is where you're going to add and remove applications from again that we saw earlier from the help screen. So if you're looking for how to find that again, right there in your settings. Sounds, light sources, this is going to be where your uh, repositories are coming from. So you can see right now I'm actually loading from um, EU. Hmm. Well, I probably want to go to something closer to where I'm at. So there's a Linux light uh, default US. Here's an East Coast. Here's a West Coast. Let's just do the default. So you use this one here and that's going to, okay, that's already set by default. All right. So that's set up there. And then let's see, we got some tweaks. So if you need to fix your boot up, clear out your memory, uh, setting the default web browser. So these are all a variety of just little tweaks that you can begin here. So it's looking for all the different web browsers and uh, Firefox is the one. So we'll go ahead and set that as the default. And then we can see what else we have. Firefox cache, hibernate, suspend, host names, uh, kernel installer. So let's go ahead and have a look at that. Most of these are gonna need your administrative password. So we're just entering that. So we're gonna go and fetch the latest updates there and then launching the kernel installer. So it does not tell us what we are currently using, it looks like. 
that's okay. It did tell us, I think, was it 415, I think? But if I want to go up to a newer kernel, I can just go ahead and do that. So if you want to change your kernel, you can go ahead and do that. So who might want to change your kernel? That is all of the prepackaged Linux software, the under the hood stuff. If you're running the latest hardware, you're going to want to upgrade your kernel to the highest amount that you can, most likely. If you are running older hardware, you can just use whatever it ships with, as that's probably going to work better for you. In general, I don't always advocate, like, I always advocate your security updates in your kernel, but I don't advocate changing your kernel just because a new version has jumped out. There's always a few little bugs here and there when you are changing your kernel, which is why it does say under the kernel installer to use caution. Okay, logging archives. Here's your enable or disable your number lock. So you can see there's just so many, uh, so many cool things in here. That is why Linux Lite is just such a great operating system. All the tools that they have built into it, it just makes it feel like a wonderful, easy to use system. And uh, I can tell you that this is gonna run very well on lower spec hardware. So definitely check out Linux Lite. So uh, with that, those are my thoughts and uh, just a brief overview and analysis of the Linux Lite 4.6 release. Let me know your thoughts and comments. Do you use Linux Lite? Are you curious about it? Do you have questions about it? Leave all those down below. And if I don't answer it, somebody else in the community who does use Linux Lite will also be able to help you out with that as well. So thanks for coming along. Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below.